Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look. First thing. First, do we have a linear factor or a linear divisor? Yes, so we can apply synthetic division, right? But, Ashlyn, you ready? Ashlyn, ready? But before we can go and apply synthetic division, we know that this is not an order, plus we have some missing terms, right? So first of all, if we want to figure out what like our possible potential 0 is, we could have 2 minus x you know, equal to 0, but you guys would see x is equal to 2, right? So we'll put that on the, uh, actually, hold on. So x equals 2 is going to be on outside. Now, we want to make sure we have this in descending order. So 3x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1 is all good, but what about x cubed? And what about the x, right? So what we want to do in this case is just rewrite this as 3x to the fourth plus 3, I'm sorry, yeah, plus 0x cubed minus x squared plus 0x plus 1. It is extremely important, guys, that we understand that for synthetic division, we have to make sure we include these place values. It wasn't required for long division. It's required for our synthetic division. Okay. So now when we go from here, we can set it up. 3, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. All right. So now we just bring down the 3. 3 times 2 is going to be a 6. 0 plus 6 is 6. 6 times 2 is going to be 12. One, negative 1 plus 12 is going to be 11. 11 times 2 is 22. 0 plus 22 is 22. 22 plus 2 is um, 44. 44 plus uh, 1 plus 44 is 45. So you say, obviously, guys, we have a remainder here, right? 2 does not evenly divide into 7. Nope. X, 2 minus x does not evenly divide into this 1 minus x squared plus 3x to the fourth, right? It doesn't evenly divide. So therefore, we know it's not a factor. And if, since it's not a factor, we know that 2 is not a 0. Would you guys agree with me? OK. But I also said, guys, we got to check our answer using the remainder theorem. So remember, what the remainder theorem is going to tell us, oh, actually, first, Let's go ahead and write down what our answer would represent. Sorry, let me go and take a look at that first. Remember, the last term is our remainder, constant, coefficient of linear, coefficient of quadratic, coefficient of quadratic, or of cubic. So to write your answer, like how we did for uh, long division, all you do is take the remainder and then put it over your divisor. Okay. So that would be our quotient. But again, guys, if we're going to use the remainder theorem, we're going to get a remain, we're going to get, when I do, if we call this like function f of x, if I plug in f of 2, I should get 45. That's what the remainder theorem tells us. Whatever I'm plugging in of that 0, I should get as far as, um, it's not a 0 though, but I should get the same remainder. So let's check that out, let's see if that happens. 3 times 2 cubed, plus 6 times 2 squared, plus 11 times 2, plus 22. Oh, wait, I'm plugging that into the remainder. No wonder. I'm like, that's not going to work, right? You've got to plug it into that equation. So f of 2 equals 3x to the fourth minus x squared. You got to plug in the 2. Plus 1. Okay, so 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the fourth power would be 16. Times 3 is 1632. 48. 2 squared is 4. Plus 1. Well, 48 minus 4 is 44. Plus 1 is equal to 45. So now you guys have a great way for you guys to be able to check your division if you did it correctly. Remainder is 45. By using the remainder theorem, I get 45. Huh? You said 2 wasn't a 0. You're right. It's not a 0 because the remainder is not 0. I thought you said it didn't have to be. It just had to match. I thought it had to equal 45. The remainder didn't. No, this does equal 45. It's not, no, 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 no. Guys, 
the remainder theorem states, look at the remainder theorem. It has nothing to do with zeros. It doesn't say anything about like if something's a zero or a factor. All it says is if you have a factor, x minus k, and you divide that factor, if you divide x minus k into a polynomial, not saying evenly, it's just saying if you divide it into it, then, the, and it has a remainder of r, mm -hmm. which here, what that's saying is that then you take f of k, like so plug that like potential 0 into, the, into your original function, you're going to get the same remainder. So I got 45 and I got 45. OK, is this, a, is this a factor? The bottom part? Is this a factor? No. How do we know if, guys, last example, was that a factor or not? Yeah, there's a remainder of a factor. Right. The only time we know if something's a, zero, a factor is if there's a remainder of 0. So if you have a remainder of 0, it's not a factor. Okay. Done. So, what, so again, what did we do over here? f of something, f of this, f of this. What, were, what do they all equal? 0, 0, 0. So they're all, that all showed that there were factors and zeros. Here, they're not showing their factors zero. They're showing that the remainder is 45. So but I'm just showing, giving you a way to check your answer. OK, so after that step, we know if that's a factor or not. We don't have to do the rest of it. It's not a factor, yeah. It's not a factor because it has a remainder. All I said was it was a two-part question. I said, hey, divide. And then I said, check your answer using the remainder theorem. Okay. So we're just using this to check our answer. That's it, OK? So yep. One more 